Hi, this is Randy Rosenbaum, Executive Director of the Rhode Island State Council on the Arts. I'd like to take a few minutes to walk you through some of the items and issues that came out of our 2013 Art Charette, which was held on Monday, February 11, uh, 2013, at the Smithfield in campus of Fidelity Investments. Uh, to remind you, the, sh the purpose of the charrette was to explore ways that we could grow and uh, develop the arts community in the state of Rhode Island so that it could contribute more dynamically to economic development in our state. And in doing so, we sought out to um, explore three specific questions. First, in what ways can Rhode Island distinguish itself from other states to become a state of the arts? Second, what specific tools can government employ to encourage growth and jobs in the arts sector? And third, how can nonprofit, business, government, and academic institutions work together to market, incent, support, and grow the arts sector in Rhode Island? We had over 100 people from each of these communities, the nonprofit, arts community, business, government, and academic institutions who broke out into small group sessions to explore all three of these questions. So let's go one at a time, and let's start with, in what ways can Rhode Island distinguish itself from other states to become a state of the arts? Um, we came up with four specific ideas in this particular area. First, establish the arts as a major part of the Rhode Island brand. Second, support and sustain the Rhode Island arts community. Third, promote the arts in Rhode Island and nationally. And finally, promote research and data collection to better understand and grow the arts in Rhode Island. Looking at each of these in turn, in the area of branding, the idea was to create a branding campaign which helps to establish identity, put meat on the bones, if you will, an extension perhaps of the creative capital work that's happening in the city of Providence with greater communication internally and externally. And to extend that even further, make the most of our size and arts density to brand and distinguish Rhode Island as the art state. Rhode Island's small size is its asset. Get over Rhode Island's inferiority complex. What we have in Rhode Island is great and valuable. The idea that visual branding of, the, of arts districts, perhaps arts trails, in conjunction with a PR program and partnerships with the food industry, and to extend that further, put food in with the arts, the idea of combining these two great assets, the incredible arts community that we have here in Rhode Island, but also our national and international reputation as a center for great restaurants. Be more entrepreneurial, push the envelope in this area. Promote better signage, public art, banners for arts districts, and again, think of establishing arts trails. There was some discussion on where we already are as a brand. Some people arguing that we're already there, that we're well known as a design state. We were host of the Better World by Design conference this past year at the Rhode Island School of Design. And given the presence of RISD and other institutions, are well positioned as a leader in the design area. Some notions about branding labels, great creative ideas happen here. Rhode Island, where innovation starts. The notion that Rhode Island could act as a workshop for the arts and design industry. And a need to better define state of the arts, uh, to be considered best to the best as a model of states. And uh, again, under the area of branding, strategically utilize small state marketing budget for arts branding and or for the tax-free pur purchase of art. Again, connections with the tourism industry make a lot of this possible. Under the notion of supporting and sustaining the Rhode Island arts community, some ideas that came out of here were a state of the arts show, the idea that we should coalesce projects and support them as combined efforts, look into the notion of holistic investment in the arts, Financial incentives from state to partner with other arts organizations, the idea that we should be encouraging arts organizations to work together to build things that might have greater economic impact. Statewide initiatives, another way of thinking about this in a comprehensive way. 
the suggestion that we ask the organizations what they need and then try to support them in their efforts to contribute to the economy, create and sustain a vibrant arts community again in all these ways. We should explore how to support the small arts and design industries, the cottage industries in our state that are growing and developing um, as uh, small and small organizations. Um, and look at the idea of art, developing art colonies using the Providence Art Club as a model, but with no specific locality in mind. So those are thoughts about supporting and sustaining the arts community. The idea of promoting the arts in Rhode Island and nationally, uh, several areas were suggested. Um, supporting and promoting festivals, um, uh, indoor, both indoor and outdoor festivals. Link organizations to one another, which is easy to connect in a small state like ours. The suggestion that we surface hidden artists, industrial artists, the assets of cottage industries, folk and traditional artists, all under the same tent. Several suggestions came about a um, unified uh, site for arts information. The idea that a um, central database for the arts that tourists and Rhode Islanders could use for guidance about arts events to see and create a unified arts calendar for events across the state. We should in all this work in promoting the arts in Rhode Island celebrate our diversity and uh, proceed from the notion that our state is local and that so much is happening in local communities and neighborhoods throughout our state. The notion that the arts are not territorial, that there are no borders associated with them is a positive, and that we should be identifying hidden gems and promoting those hidden gems in the central database or cent central unified arts calendar. In all this, we should keep in mind that kid-friendly programming is important, and the notion was presented that there should be, in cooperation with our state transportation system, an art shuttle that could move people around the state between cultural institutions. And the final notion in this general question of um, how distinguish ourselves, distinguishing Rhode Island as a state of the arts, promote research and data collection to better understand and grow the arts in Rhode Island. Several ideas in this area. Discover and document the real economic impact of the arts, not just restaurants, but hotels, parking, etc. Question the audience outside the state, but also inside the state of Rhode Island. Gather data on connections between food culture, arts culture, and national publicity for both. Find, identify benchmark states and or communities and learn from them and understand that we are in a competitive marketplace. The area of research, how do other arts cities and states create success? How do we measure up? And looking at benchmarking and strategies that could be developed from understanding this better. And also the notion of consolidation and what benefits could accrue from that. The next major question area we have, what specific tools can government employ to encourage growth and jobs in the arts sector? In this, three general areas that were under consideration. Increase and sustain funding for the arts. Improve and expand arts learning opportunities at all levels of education. And finally, use the state's tax and bonding authority to advance the arts in Rhode Island. Under increase and sustain funding for the arts, we had the uh, proposal to restore and increase funding for RISCA the Rhode Island State Council on the Arts, to support the arts community. And also for government to develop and support fellowships and incubators to fuel, fund, and inspire economic development. In the area of improving and expanding arts learning opportunities at all levels of education, several notions. First, that education is fundamentally an equity and access issue that every single kid needs fund a fundamental base of the arts, that education should promote access and depth of knowledge, that we need a shift in mandate of testings in te from testing, more magnet schools, and more experiences in the arts for youth, that education should include curriculum-based programs to foster awareness and understanding among all school children through partnerships with our state's organizations and artists. The notion that learning should not just take place in the school, 
but that there should be connections to the broader arts community in our state to the benefit of all student learning in the arts. Curriculum-based programs that partner with arts organizations so every child appreciates the arts. Again, this, this issue raised in a different way. And then bring art from schools and colleges out to display at corporate and government sites and vice versa. Get this exchange of ideas and cultural amenities uh, going. And finally, in this area, use the state's tax and bonding authority to advance the arts in Rhode Island. Expand arts districts statewide. Uh, you may know that uh, we have nine uh, communities that have arts districts in them in Rhode Island where people can purchase one-of-a-kind original works of art or limited edition works of art uh, exempt from state sales tax. The notion was to revise tax policy and tax credits to be more inclusive, promote statewide tax-free arts districts. The notion of statewide arts districts have been came up as a theme throughout this gathering. Then expand the idea of tax districts to support creative placemaking, enterprise zones, include property tax abatement and other tax relief for both performing and visual arts, incentives to locate in creative enterprise zones. Then work together to advocate for expanding the state tax credits beyond visual arts to include more disciplines, make them fair and equitable to all. And one major issue that came up, no property tax on nonprofit visual and performing arts centers or facilities, something that a few uh, financially challenged communities are looking at as they look at their nonprofit communities as potential property tax uh, uh, sources of revenue. Um, we're, um, the proposal here is that the arts should not be part of that um, general um, process because the arts um, uh, have financial challenges of their own and you would lose more than you would gain from such an effort. Create a capital facilities fund and look into bond issues, into a bond issue to support cultural facilities and capital expenditures. The notion that Rhode Island is um, uh, blessed with a number of uh, creative facilities throughout the state, some of whom are in disrepair and in need of capital infusion of, of resources that can help improve the quality of service that they provide in their communities. Link arts and historic tax credits together, another interesting issue. And on the area of the film tax credit, to become competitive with Massachusetts, either increase the current $15 million cap on the Rhode Island motion picture tax credit or eliminate the cap altogether to promote the more opportunities for filmmaking in our state. Finally, in the area of how can nonprofit business, government, and academic institutions work together to market, incent, support, and grow the arts sector in Rhode Island, there are four general areas that were explored through this process. First, promote cooperation and collaboration between sectors. Second, jointly help to sustain and grow the arts sector. Third, work together to provide access to information and assistance to artists and arts organizations. And fourth, promote a vision of the role of the arts in Rhode Island. Looking at each of these in turn, first promote cooperation and collaboration between sectors. Some ideas generated here were to promote incubator projects in the arts and design, position Rhode Island as a regional asset, and encourage government and business to incubate arts projects. Promote examples of successful collaborations with higher education. For example, the work that Roger Williams University is doing with the Bristol and Warren communities to look at ways that underutilized buildings or non-utilized buildings in their community could be turned to arts purposes for the economic benefit that could accrue from that, and also the, the encouragement of gallery night projects in communities throughout the state instead of the three or four that currently exist. Individual collaborations are happening, but large-scale cooperation hasn't taken place. The idea that we need to work harder to encourage these kinds of large-scale projects uh, cooperating cr across sectors that can have a significant impact on the economy of our state. Encouraging collaborations between the nonprofit community, government, corporate, and higher education in order to grow the arts. And one specific 
point that was raised here was create partnerships and alliances between these groups, either through the creation of a separate commission or a creative arts strategic plan, or to include arts leaders or on any boards or commissions related to statewide economic development. And finally, promote large-scale cooperation, which should be easy in a small state, very similar to this, um, this that was described above. The next point, jointly help to sustain and grow the arts sector. Restore RISC's discretionary grant budget targeted to help small arts businesses grow. Support arts education for K-16 to career pathways in the arts and design. And innovative teachers using STEM to STEAM and arts integration, such as the Smart Schools initiatives. Um, in this, bring business, nonprofit, and higher education together to advocate for full sustained arts funding that is restored to its levels from 10 years ago, including $1 million in discretionary grants for RISCA as a first start or first step. Work together to identify, appoint, and work with an arts advocate in every one of Rhode Island's 39 cities and towns. And work together to create a program for an artist in residence in every Rhode Island community. From higher education, we heard that they can offer terrific interns, not just in the arts, but in communications, media, and other areas. Arts funding should support what exists, and government should take a leadership role in this funding effort. Cast a wider net for growing the economic ecosystem to develop more patrons, benefactors, and sponsors. The economy needs to be made more broad-based. In, in other words, work together across these sector lines to get more people supporting the arts actively. And another suggestion was expand our 1% program that places art in public facilities to 2% for the arts to achieve more support in providing for public art throughout Rhode Island. The third point, general point, work together to provide access to information and assistance to artists and arts organizations. That came with an uh, encouragement to do more in the area of marketing and promotion, encourage Rhode Island organizations to take their work on the road to other areas of the state, help students and others travel to arts events and new, ven new venues, and help with marketing for artists. TV should offer more public service. Uh, in the area of um, support for uh, individual artists who are by some token self-employed, can the state help with health care, basic infrastructure, retirement benefits? And how can artists, small arts businesses, and nonprofits find information about changes in health care? And finally, promote a vision of the role of the arts in Rhode Island. In this area, let's define what government's vision is for the arts. And let's work together to create an atmosphere where the arts community can thrive and remove obstacles that obstruct economic impact of the arts organizations. Cities and the state should make a decision to be the very best. Businesses should be on board with this goal. And the, the general notion that great art creates a great arts culture and that we should foster a community of non-competition. So in general terms, this is what was surfaced during the February 11, 2013 Art Charette here in Rhode Island. Um, there is much more that needs to be done in this area. I would appreciate any feedback or responses you might have or suggestions on next steps, and we will keep you informed and engaged as this process continues. Thank you for the, your attention.